Hi, Hawk Nation. This week we started drama. And one of the elements of drama that we're going to talk about today are stage directions. Stage directions are directions that are not spoken out loud. They tell the actors what to do. And in the text, they're usually in italics, inside of parentheses, or inside of brackets. This week, we read the short drama, The Hammock. The actions of the characters are very important in this play. The actions are described in stage directions. The stage directions are in italics and describe what the characters are doing. The stage directions work with the dialogue to communicate the events the play of the play to the reader and the audience. For example, while Belinda is describing how she asked the people at the stores if the hammock would hold her weight, she's described as looking at it nervously. This combination of dialogue and action shows that she is nervous about getting into the hammock. We've talked that dramas look different in their structure. They contain, they contain a list of characters and they have stage directions. These stage directions are in italics and inside of brackets. And then this is the dialogue. First Belinda speaks, then Betty speaks, then Belinda speaks. So this makes it a little bit difficult, different for our star strategies. If we were to write S, T, A, A, R, under our scan, we usually look for names, dates, places, times, numbers, bold, italics, underline, and things in quotations. So this is going to be a little bit different in our scan because we have lots of things that are in italics. So we would end up circling a lot of things that we wouldn't need to. So that's why we need to talk about how to do the star strategy when it's a drama because of the stage directions. The stage directions are telling the actors what to do. You will not see these as an audience member because the actors are acting out and following the directions of the drama. So for the scanning, if we were to look from the bottom up on this top page, we would not circle Belinda or Betty or Belinda or Betty over and over again because we know those are the characters in the, in the drama. We would not circle coming to front of Hammock from inside the house. We would not circle Betty and middle-aged servant. We would not circle those things because those are the stage directions. They're telling the actors what to do. So in the scan, in a drama, it's still best probably to circle the characters because they'll tell you who the characters are in the drama. And then also, usually, there'll be a time and place listed in the drama, and you can just circle those. For here, ours is listed right here. So I will circle that today. You'll still follow the take apart the questions. You'll still do the author's purpose. Most dramas are um, fiction. So when you would draw out your author's purpose, P-I-E-E, -E, these two being nonfiction, these two being fiction, this side usually poetry. So this would probably be the entertain because they're trying to teach us something. And any time they're trying to teach us something, <clears throat> that usually is the theme. So most dramas have a theme, the lesson that they're trying to teach us. Like, treat others how you want to be treated, or don't judge a book by its cover. So you would still do the take apart the questions, the author's purpose. And the annotate would be a little bit different also. For the annotate, there's not going to be any text features or paragraphs. There may be a differentiation between the act and the scene, and you could draw a line there. But in today's text, we just have one big, long 
uh, piece of text. So our rule of thumb is not to do more than a hand. And if we have a full text, we would do no more than three T-charts. So I would chunk this into three. And I would draw my T-charts over here if you want. Who, what, is, said, did. Who, what, is, said, did. And the reason why we do this is because sometimes we forget what we read. We want to keep that inner voice going in our head the whole time. Because we've talked about when you read, you should have a movie going on inside. And if you don't, then you just stop, reread it, and then make a note, a quick T-chart. So once you've annotated, then you could go back and actually do the, the questions. And in this particular piece, we did not. But you would go back and reread and mark evidence. So today we talked about stage directions. Betty is a middle class servant. So from the stage directions, we'd say Belinda, and she was inside the house, so the actors would know that she would be inside the house. And she's asking in the dialogue, are you sure you're trying tying it up tightly enough, Betty? And Betty, they're telling her to come to the front of the hammock, so she would have had to be standing behind it before. This is a stage direction. And this is a stage direction. So we wouldn't circle or underline those when we are annotating a drama because you would have lots and lots of things circled and we don't want to clog our mind up. So just wanted to give you a couple tips about an element of drama called stage directions. They tell our, our actors what to do, where to stand, how to act. I wanted to give you some information on how to uh, do your star strategies for a drama. You'd still chunk it, but we wouldn't necessarily always circle everything in italics because those are the stage directions. Thank you.